Andres, two points the first time you played Northwestern. What was different for you tonight, and when did you kind of get a sense of, that you were feeling it? Um, I think uh, I was more aggressive, and credit to all my teammates that they was able to find me, you know, when I was on uh, transition or when I was opening. I give all the credit to my teammate. Jim? Uh, <clears throat> either one of you guys, mainly for you, Andres. Uh, Coach Underwood talks about getting to the free throw line a lot, and it's cer certainly what you guys did tonight. Is that your idea is just to get there and slash as much as you can and get try to draw fouls? Um, that's one on one of the point that getting to the free throw line, even uh, at home or on the road. You know, we have to be aggressive and trying to keep getting on the free throw line. That's gonna help us a lot. Over here. Andres, 16 of 17 at the line tonight. Have you had a game like tonight where you score a lot of points, but most of it has been at the line? And, and what was it like just going to the line like that so much? Uh, like I said, man, like I was being aggressive, and uh, uh, my teammate was able to find me, you know, get on the pin and, you know, like find me in transition and stuff like that. And I just was being aggressive. You're Andres, when you get the outlet pass and you're and you're going and you see your defender backpedaling, is that when you kind of know that you kind of have them beat and that's when you should attack the rim? Uh, I basically look at how they big, like where the bigs at. If it's behind me and I see like the open space at, and I see that can attack, it, I just take it. Isaac, Andres, what are those emotions like when you run off the court and all those people are cheering for you after that interview? I just feel great, you know. I feel great being here and. Being in this team, you know, since we've been battling since the beginning of the year, like we've been, like we've been fighting, working hard, and we like we never have give up. Like we stay as a team, we keep working hard. I, when, when Andres is having, you know, like he's had for the last two or three, I mean, he's been playing pretty well lately. What does that add to your team, and you know, what do you kind of think when he starts getting in that zone? Oh, it makes it. It's better for our team because now they can't just lock in on um, me, Georgia, Trent. And um, so when he gets going, um, it's really a, a bonus for us because he gets in there, he, he can pass, and he can finish also. So, I mean, and also he comes off the bench, so like he gets us a spark off the bench. Northwestern's very good half-court defensive team, but you guys were able to push the ball 27 fast break points. When you go in, was that your game plan to attack and transition and, and, and before they could set up their defense? Yeah, I mean, that. that that's what we wanted to do because we know that that we know we want to get to the foul line, so we know we play good defense. They taking tough and long shots, and long shots equals I mean yeah, long shots equal long rebounds. So we just wanted to get out and push and try to get easy baskets. Shut up. Uh, you, you talked yesterday about you know, not being you know, too worried when you know, your shot wasn't falling. Was it good to see you know some fall you know, early in the game today? It's been, you know, for you, Trent, you know, for a lot of the guys. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I mean like when you're shooting and you miss and you see something go in, that's like. That's just seeing, like, just seeing dollar signs, basically. Like, I mean, I've been missing a lot um, within the last five games. But I know I was putting the work in, like I said yesterday. So I know eventually it will fall. And I just got to just stay locked in and just keep doing what I was doing. Joey? Andres, to snap this three-game losing streak against Northwestern, what does that mean for, for you guys as a team? And what, what was that locker room like? Uh, it's been great, you know. Like, like I said, we have stayed together as a team. It doesn't matter if it's Northwest or whoever we play. Like we stay together as a team. We just look up to the next opponent and we go for. Isaac in the back here in the middle. Io, how would you evaluate that one, two, two, three quarter court press that you started from the beginning? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's um tough to defend because we it's tough to defend because we are long and um we get after them. So when they get in that area, we feel like we can trap them. And we just play off instinct, and then we get back and we go into fifth. So basically, the defense, they got to work. So now when they get back into the half court, it's like 16 on the shot clock, and then it just disrupts their offense. I it didn't seem like you guys got kind of rattled when they started to close that lead and start making shots. Is that just kind of because of where you guys have been this season and some of the experiences you guys have built up? Yeah, like I told, like I said yesterday, like we, it's March now, so like we really, we're playing like this our last game. If we lose, we got to go home. So we really don't have anything to lose at this point. So we just want to come out and just play as hard as we can. So when teams make runs, um, as a leader, I just try to tell tell the guys that 
you have to stay focused and you have to stay locked in. If you're in the middle of a battle, it's hard to just point the finger or get to, to yelling. So we just got to just absorb their hit and just keep going. Uh, Io, when Andre's checked into the game, he scored five straight points for you guys. Do you feel like he kind of set the tone for the game? Yeah, I mean, like I said, he's a great, great player. And um, when he come off the bench, it's really, um, it's really hard for him. I mean, it's really hard for the defenders to come out because mostly their starters are coming out the game, and he's coming in fresh and he's attacking and getting to the line, and um, it really gives us a spark. Brad. Dre, as you've adjusted to the length of the players, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, and then also like just understanding situations and making good decisions, what do you think has been the biggest key for you over the past month and your strong play? Uh, staying aggressive, staying aggressive, and you know, kind of be smart reading the defenders and see what they give me. You know, like if I seen like you was talking about earlier, like if I seen them back pedal and I like coming in front of them, and I seen I have the opportunity to get to the basket. And, like I said, being aggressive, that's what I'm taking. It was a good college basketball game. I think it's a uh, tribute to Chris and his team. Um, and they, that's a veteran team with a lot of pride. They fought. Uh, we jumped on them early. And uh, they did what a, what a good Big Ten basketball team does, and that's fight back. And, and um, you know, made it interesting on us. But uh, I liked our first half. Uh, did something a little different, trying to pick up and, and, and press after makes. Uh, tried to get after them just to be disruptive. They're a team that's set oriented. Uh, we wanted to uh, really try to knock them out of that, and make them play with short clock, uh, not let them just come down and get into their things um, uh, so easily. And um, I thought that was pretty effective. Second half, uh, maybe not as much. I think it had more to do with us. Uh, just the first uh, first four minutes were, were, were a struggle again of the second half. But um, I thought Andres Felice was was obviously a guy that uh, was terrific. We talked about after the Purdue game, a game in which we shot 33s, uh, not doing that anymore. And uh, we have to – we settled, and we can't settle. Uh, we've got to be a team that tries to get the ball into the paint, whether it's to Georgie or whether it's uh, through the dribble drive. 16 assists on, on uh, 21 field goals. Uh, I love that. And uh, that's a result of, of uh, getting the ball in the paint and spraying it and uh, being very, very unselfish. So um, 38 free throws might be a season high, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the one thing that goes unnoticed is, or untalked about anybody with anybody is Dre put 11 fouls himself on their team. And that's, uh, uh, that's a huge number. I'd be challenged to see many guards that have done that this year. So uh, great win and uh, excited to get back on the, in the right column. And, um, you know, I thought we were, uh, we were good when we had to be. <clears throat> Brad, what's the biggest difference in Andres now versus when he, we guys first played at Northwestern? Well, he was, I don't know, what were we? 10, 11 games in, you know, I think, you know, kind of the old myth that is it takes junior college players a semester, you know, to get acclimated and, and understand what we're doing. And, and now he's confident and, and he's, you know, he's three fourths of his way through his, his first year. And you're seeing a guy that knows and where he can pick and choose his spots and he's more comfortable in the offense. And, and um, uh, he's been, he, he was terrific tonight. <clears throat> He started you know, Andres you know, at Purdue, maybe just to get a different look there you know, on the road. But has he maybe shown where he is, you know, the type of guy that you like to bring off the bench, just with you know, kind of the energy and an effort that he that he always has? Dre does an unbelievable job of echoing me, and what I mean by that, it's 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 it sometimes gets lost in translation from what goes on in a huddle or the course of a game. Uh, you, you always see him, he's overstanding in front of me. He echoes that. And uh, uh, now he's getting to a point where he's really confident, hey, let's run this, let's run that. Uh, that's familiarity, that's comfort. And, uh, you know, that's what, those are what great lead guards do. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that understands the game. Um, you know, the, the, start at, the start at Purdue was um, he settles us. And he gets us. There. He's got a he's got a poise about him that I really like. And and yet, um, 
you know, it didn't take me long to get him in the game tonight either, you know, when we didn't start him. So um, he's been really good in that role. Back to the left here. Uh, in January at Northwestern, obviously a, a tough loss for you guys. You came into the press conference a little emotional. Uh, how much did sort of how that game ended and, and your, your feelings after that game, how much did that sort of play into both your preparation, getting the team fired up for this one? Didn't have as much to do with this one as it did our season. Um, you know, that was a really, really crushed locker room in Evanston. And uh, um, as much as our locker room was hurting, I was pretty happy inside because they were hurting. And, and that let me know that this group was bought in and they're committed and they were uh, dedicated to, to continuing to, to work and fight and get better. There was no, there was no uh, hang in their head and this team has continued to improve. All you got to do is watch the film of the first game and then keep looking at us and the steps we've been taking. Uh, so it, it didn't have as much to do with this game uh, as it, as it, for me as it did the overall course of how our team has bought in throughout the year and improved. Tyler? Coach, you mentioned the 33s um, at Purdue and only 16 tonight. However, two of those were from Georgie. Do you think those were uh, maybe him settling out of frustration a little bit, or are you comfortable with those shots in those situations? No. We're not. I mean, it's Georgie's capable of doing that. He shoots him in practice. He hasn't been doing it. I, you know, I don't know if it was frustration. I'll have a conversation with him about him. Um, but it's... Uh, you know, give Pardon a lot of credit. You know, he's an upperclassman that's smart and really good defender. And, uh, um, you know, I'm just proud that Georgie stepped up and made his free throws tonight and because and, they were all needed. Coach, I, I know that rebounding's been a point of emphasis all year. How happy were you, were you with your guys that rebound Northwestern by 10? Yeah, that's been huge. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's – People don't give Aaron Jordan enough credit for, for it, the job he does. And, I mean, here's a guy that gets 10 rebounds, all of them defensive. He's a guy that is undersized, playing the four. He's scrapping. He's fighting. Uh, you know, Georgie's been great on the glass, 17 rebounds, I think, the last couple games, uh, you know, 10 with 10 at Purdue. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a concentrated effort. What I'm trying to get our guards to do is all be like Dre. Dre goes back and he's getting five, six, seven every night, and and we've got to get the other guys doing that. Uh, there's nothing better than a than a guard rebounding, so we can start the fast break and start running, and that's something we've uh, uh, we got to continue to, to to impress on them that how important that is. Eric, coach, when Andres first checked into the game, he scored five straight points for you guys. Did you feel like he kind of set the tone for the game going forward? Yeah, I thought our defense early was really good. I thought I thought that was the f the first thing we got him, maybe a little sped up, a little uh, uh, out of sorts. And then Dre came in, and and we knew there were creases. We had four easy baskets against them in the game there, uh, where we just just in a speed dribble drove the ball down the court and put a little heat on them. And uh, uh, we talked a lot about that being able to 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 do that. And we knew if you know. Dre's as good at it as anybody. It puts a lot of foul problems on people and, and, and foul pressure. So uh, we tried to do that, but it was sure a good start for him. And what have you noticed about his style of play that allows him to be so successful in transition in general? Well, he's strong. I mean, he's got incredibly strong lower lower part of his body. He doesn't get knocked, you know, with physical contact. You know, from the, from the waist down, uh, you know, he's got really strong legs and – and so he's able to, to, to handle that contact. He's, he's done that his whole life. So he's figured out how to, how to score, how to take the hit, how to finish. And uh, yeah, he's good at it. Shane. You mentioned the idea of how this team has improved through the season. And when you look at a guy like Felice and how he's emerged, what does that make you feel just about the future with, with guys like that who are getting better and emerging at this time of year? Well, I come to practice every day. Loving coaching this team, and that's I'm I'm as energetic. I'll be as energetic on Tuesday in practice as I was day one, because this team has done that. They've they they've they keep giving us life, and uh, no matter how you know we come off a loss of Purdue or we lost a tough one in Madison, uh, but it's improvement. And when guys improve as a coach, that's all you can ask for. And 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 then when you got really good human beings on top of it, uh, man, it it. I go to bed every night with a smile on my face and looking forward and eager to the next day because it's 
uh, the one thing that we can't give them is the experience, and they're gaining that and, and learning, and uh, that's exciting. Fred, you guys had the 15-point lead, and Northwestern started hitting some shots in that second half, but you guys looked like you were composed throughout. Is that just kind of a product of where you've been this season and yeah. not getting rattled? Yeah, I think we've been through all that stuff, Michigan State, and I think we've, you know, Wisconsin, I think the other night at Purdue, you know, we're, we were down, we fight and tie it back, and, you know, I think it's just a matter of, you know, this team's understanding, they've got some confidence, and and that uh, that we can do some things to uh, to, to claw back into it when, uh, when a team makes a run. It's the Big Ten, man, it's the best league in college basketball, really good players, really, really good coaches, and teams are going to make runs at you, and teams are going to... Uh, you don't find very, very, very few uh, games decided by more than two possessions in this league. Derek. <clears throat> Coach Trent had three assists combined in the previous three games, five for him tonight. What did you see differently from him tonight? He passed. I mean, that's – let's be really obvious. I mean, he passed. I, You know, Trent's really good in practice, and, and he spent a lot of time – we talked about that – is not just, not, not just having tunnel vision, uh, but seeing the court. And, uh, you know, that's one thing he really grew last year doing. And, and, I, and I think sometimes he feels that if, if Io's not going or Georgie's not going, that he takes that burden upon himself. And, and uh, that gets really hard to do. And, uh, you know, let, let your teammates be good and, uh, and help you. And, and uh, he, he did a great job of that today. Tyler. Um, Coach, I think um, Northwestern only had eight turnovers for the whole game. It might be the lowest uh, conference number you forced this year. Um, is there something that Northwestern was doing differently compared to the previous game? or Four ball handlers. Four of them. I mean, there was, you know, a lot of teams don't play like that. A lot of teams, you know, are, have a primary ball handler and they, they, they play that way. And so you get, uh, you know, matchups where you can bring the ball up the court and, and then they. Uh, uh, you know, they didn't run a lot of their actions that they normally run, which is, is normal against us. But uh, you know, that's one of the primary reasons was, was you know, they, they changed their lineup again and put and put Cop in the lineup. And he's a kid who can handle it and drive it. And, and you know, along with Gaines and Vic and Turner and changed the lineup again at half. So, yeah, their, their, their ability to handle it was, was um, effective that way. Coach, you got some quality minutes out of DeMonte Williams today. Just talk a little bit more about his role in the team now and how it's, you know, evolved throughout the season. Yeah, he was terrific. And, and uh, you know, I, I have so much trust in DeMonte in terms of what uh, what he gives us. And, uh, you know, he's, he shot the ball awfully well in practice. It was good to see those those balls go in. He's an excellent driver. And then he makes the right decisions when he, when he drives. And... Uh, you know, it's unfortunate tonight. I probably didn't play him as much in the second half, just simply because the three guards were going. And uh, uh, yet, I feel so confident with him in the game, and and uh, uh, he makes the right reads and, and and the right coverages, and 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 I have a lot of trust in him. In the middle, coach, you said after the last couple of losses, you you felt the team, you know, needed to get the ball more to Georgie. Um, you know, twelve points, two of six shooting tonight. Uh, Kind of ran through Felice a little bit. It felt like more than that. But how would you evaluate um, just his game and, and his role in the offense right now? Well, I think he's seeing a lot of different things. I think he's seeing some people double team him, which he saw at Purdue. Uh, but I think he's, you know, he's trying to he's trying to find out. Pardon's a terrific defender. Um, you know, we've probably got to help him a little bit, and in, uh, in, a, in a couple of things that we do offensively in terms of catching the ball. Um, you know, a little closer. He's catching it off the block a little bit, um, but I, I I love what he's doing. I you know I'm I'm frustrated with his turnovers uh, because he's a better player than that, and he doesn't. Uh, I, we don't see that. But you know, the first possession of the game, he throws one behind his back. Uh, he might complete that in practice when it's against uh, you know the walk-ons, but in a Big Ten game, that's not gonna that's not gonna work. But uh, uh, we live with some of that with Georgie. You talked earlier about the press defense um, you guys came out in. Why did you come out in, and did you think it was effective throughout the game? I thought it was really effective the first half. I thought it just got them on their heels uh, a little bit. I thought it got them out of, out of rhythm, uh, not just bringing the ball up the court and, and, and walking into their offense. Uh, you know, they did a good job. I think they scored a basket or two, but I thought we got some turnovers. We got some easy baskets out of it. And, uh, you know, the second half we went a little more straight man. 
um, until late in the game. But uh, yeah, I thought it was effective for the most part. Eric? Uh, since inserting DeMonte into the starting lineup, it seems like him and AJ have kind of developed a defensive chemistry somewhere that Trent and Ios. Just what kind of luxury is that giving you defensively to have that the, those two guys, similar frames, be able to have that kind of versatile, or versatility? Both those guys have to fight because they're undersized. Both, I mean, it, it allows us to do some things switching wise, um, but they're both tougher than nails. They both fight. They both compete. Um, you know, I can't say enough about about that part of it. So, you know, I think there's a great chemistry. I think our team's developing that. I think our roles are 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 becoming, uh, you know, set in stone a little bit. And uh, I like that. I like I like people who know what their their specific role is, and and uh, uh, we're getting there.